Hello guys, so um, in this video we want to um, solve some more problems on absolute value inequalities. Uh, these are the problems we want to look at. Uh, so we're going to start with this, um, maybe the first two in um, one video and then we'll cover the next two in, um, in a separate one, uh, depending on how things go. Um, I'll take one and show you three different ways by which you can solve this inequality. All right, this absolute value um, inequality. Um, and then subsequently, I'll just use one of the methods. All right, but at least you know uh, three ways by which you can solve it. Okay, so let's take one. Um, absolute value of 2x plus 3 is less than 9. Well, we can just use the definition that we learned, right, about absolute values. This means that whatever is the absolute value, Right, this means that 2x plus 3 lies between negative 9 and 9. Okay, the plan is to solve for x, right? X, we want x to remain in the middle here. Um, so, what do you do? How do you get rid of uh, 3? Subtract 3 from, from each term. So, you take negative 9 minus 3. They have 2x plus 3, subtract 3 from x, take 9 minus 3. Okay, to get rid of this. So this gives us, this is negative 12 minus 3 minus 3 is 0, so we got rid of that. We have 2x is less than 9 minus 3 is 6. Now we have 2 here, uh, it's positive, so you divide through by 2. If you divide through by 2, the signs here remain the same. Because it's not negative, you don't need to switch the signs. So divide through by 2, by 2, by 2. This cancels out. So this means that x lies between 2 goes here 1, 2 here 6. This gives us negative 6. 2 here 1, 2 here 3. This gives us 3. So this, if you like, is the interval for this. x lies between negative 6. And three. Okay, x lies between negative six and three. That is the um, that's the solution set. Okay, for this um, for this absolute value inequality. Well, there is another way you can do it. Okay, um, remember in solving the absolute value equations, when you square the absolute value, right, you get rid of the symbols. So we can use that approach as well. So if you like method two, okay, method number two, this was method one. You square both sides of this equation. So you take two x plus three and square it, and then nine squared. When you square it, you get rid of these guys. Okay, now let's expand this. This gives us four x squared plus 4 and this 12x, this squared is 9, this guy is 81, right, 9 squared. And so this gives us 4x squared plus 12x plus 9 minus 81 is less than 0. Okay, and so we have 4x squared plus 12x, 9, and this will give us negative 72, Less than zero. We can divide through by four. If we do, we'll get x squared plus three x minus four. Um, that's eighteen, right? Eighteen times four. X two two to the minus three seventy two. So that's eighteen, right? Okay. So we have a quadratic. Um, good. So this brings us to quadratic inequalities, okay? Remember in solving quadratic inequalities, you need to find values of x that will cause this to be negative. Um, first, you can look for the roots, right, of the quadratic. Negative 18 here, uh, 6 and 3 will give us that. 6 and negative 3, right? This and this is this, this plus this is 3. And so x plus 6, and x minus 3 is less than 0. Okay? 
keep this answer in mind. I'll get rid of this and then we'll, um, we'll solve this over there. Okay, so, so you have this. Once you get here, remember how you saw um, quadratic inequalities? Um, we plot this, right? One way of doing that is to plot this. So one way of doing this is that this is quadratic. The coefficient here is positive, so it's going to be U-shaped, right? Um, the roots are, remember the roots here, uh, x is negative 6 and what? And positive 3. So you have negative 6 and positive 3. So the quadratic is going to do something like this. Right? But the quadratic has to be less than 0. It's negative. So that is below the x axis. So we are looking at this region here. What that means is that the values of x that will satisfy this quadratic lie in this region. All numbers, x values lying between negative 6 and 3. Okay? So from here, we can write down the solution is x must lie between negative 6 and 3. Because if x lies between this, then the quadratic is negative. It lies in this interval. We want it to be negative. Okay? So, this is the same solution we got by using the definition of the um, of the um, um, inequalities, absolute value inequalities. Okay, so that is um, that is the second way you can do it. Now, a third approach is very similar to this, right? You use the um, the roots to divide the number line. Okay, so again, this is the solution for method two, which is the same as what we got for um, method one, right? Okay, so another way of doing it is really you follow the same approach and then you get here right instead of plotting this graph here what you can do is that you take this on the number line you have negative six you have three you have zero you're going to use this to split the number line into three regions okay you don't need this actually from negative infinity to uh to six and then between 6 and 3, and then from 3 to positive infinity. Okay, these two numbers split the number line into three regions. And so what you do is this. You want to find a region, right? The region for which the quadratic is negative. That is the idea. Alright? So we have a region from negative infinity to negative 6. We have another region from negative 6. To 3, we have a region from 3 to positive infinity. Okay? You have this. Okay, so the point is you take a test point, any point in this interval, and put it in the quadratic. In order to make the work easier, usually you use these two. You want to multiply these two and see whether the result will be negative or positive. So if we take x plus 6, and we take x minus 3, and then, what is the sign of the whole quadratic, right? The product of this and this, x plus 6, and then x minus 3. Will it be positive or negative? So, in this interval, I will take negative 7. Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. You can take any number in the interval. You could have used negative 8. Okay? What is important is really is the sign, not the number. Okay? Negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. So this is negative. Negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. So this is also negative. When you multiply the 2, you get the whole quadratic. Negative and negative will give you a positive. Remember, but what we are looking for is negative. We want this thing to be negative. Remember, this thing is the same as this times that. Okay? Good. Then take any number that lies in this interval. Zero is one, right? It, take zero. Zero plus six is positive. Zero minus three is negative. When you multiply a positive and negative, you get negative. So this interval satisfies, right? X line in this interval satisfies the inequality. Okay? But let's finish off with the last one. 
I'm going to use 4, right? 4 plus 6 is what? 10. That is positive. 4 minus 3 is 1. That is also positive. Positive, positive is me positive. Okay, so the only interval that satisfies the inequality so that it is negative is this interval here. The interval negative 6 and 3. So that tells me that the solution set is x between negative 6 and 3. Okay, so these are three separate ways by which you can solve the absolute value inequality this one right to get a, to get a, to get the solution okay so in the subsequent ones i'm just going to use the first method or maybe the second i'll just choose one method and then we'll solve um, all the three all the three um, equations